Hello, my wonderful friends. This is so exciting. Absolutely amazing. This is Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University. I discovered mud fossils 10 years ago, and I have been trying to understand how these things were possible. And I mean, they are just absolutely incredible. So I have been posting this over a course of time, and I also do light research. And I have seen the particles they are looking for, all these people together here are looking for the same particle Rod and I found five or six years ago, the muons and the electron showers. I'll show you that, and then I'll show you the, about why I think I understand now from my research over 50 years I've been researching the atomic structure and the nucleus, which can't possibly be correct under the Bohr model. And, and they know this now, and I have shown this, and I think they've come around to understand this. And, and now they are speaking about what is the universe. How did the universe spring up now with this new knowledge of these particles? And this is Guido Tonelli, and he's going to be giving this speech. But this is my statements about what our universe developed from. It did develop from chaos. Where, who created that chaos? I have no idea, but I think it's being continuously repopulated here and there with chaos, and then they spin as a very flat accretion disk for a very long time in the soup of space, and it is a soup. This is what they miss, and that means this accretion disk, which is also a soup of magnetic particles, and these are also particles, when I say magnetic, they're push-to-shove electrons attached in, but you, you smash into something, you're creating heat and energy. It spins, it creates heat and energy on the borders, and eventually it condenses, collapses into a ball. And that's how we became a planet. We originally were flat, I believe that. They're talking about Genesis, they're talking about the origin of the universe and the solar system and our planet. It's all written out. If you read Ovid and Metamorphosis, he says it was a disk and he molded it into a ball, a sphere. And so it would hang in the firmament. And the firmament is our ionosphere, which is scrubbing firmly against the particles in space, creating heat. 2,700 degrees out there. That's where the heat's coming from. It's coming down to Earth, 80 degrees down here. It's not that it can't escape. It's because it's being forced in and crushing our Earth and our atmosphere, and then we are blowing up our atmosphere by combustion and all the other sources of solid things turning into gases. So I have a lot to contribute here, so I would like to contribute. Now he's a physicist, so he knows we're looking for muons and electron showers that develop from muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos when they concuss. Well guess what? I can show you those quite nicely. Now when they concuss, well, let me just, let's do this. This is what the pre-concussion. When this concusses, the black and white balls separate. I say that is a muon and that is an electron neutrino. When you attach these two back to back, because they are polar, just like a power magnet, back to back they make a photon which bounces off you instead of burns you like an electron. Now, when that is forced to crush into its own magnetic regions, it actually separates, and we can separate the muon from the boson. There it is right there. The black balls are the muons, which I showed you attached a second ago. They are, this is a red laser light. And it explodes at the venturi, and that's where we have the electron showers, exactly what CERN wants, and these are the black balls, which are the muons. And when it hit there, it was, uh, shot from a laser and it's, it's pulled right out of the 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 um the wave because it is just like a jet fighter a, f a f fighter exceeding the speed of sound we're exceeding the speed of light light is a wave and you know they say oh it's a wave well why am i saying it's a particle well it is a particle well how could it be a wave 
if it's a particle? Well, it's both. You say, well, that's impossible. No, it is very simple. It, all it is is the particles way back here. It has a magnetic field around it. So it creates a literal zone around it that is a concussion zone. So you have a wave that is created by the particle. If the particle moves forward, the wave precedes it. Simple as that. When it's exploded here, that's a whole different issue. It is created an explosion zone, a zone of concussion. That is light is coming backwards. It's hitting more light particles that are coming forward. You see this one? They're all the same here, but you don't even see them because they're, they're not energetic enough like this one is. You don't see them. You don't see these lights. It's just this is there. However, if you bash back into it in this kind of a condition, it just illuminates like hell because it's there and it's pushing and this is shoving back. I call it push to shove. And this entire zone is a zone that we can harvest energy out of this zone right here. I'm almost certain. This is obviously, no question whatsoever, highly increased in its energetic value. Now, if we can harvest between here and its ground back to becoming normal back here, you know, put some kind of a plate there or whatever, some kind of absorber that takes these raw electrons, because they are no longer attached to those black balls. Let's go back here and look one more time. This is very important because this needs to be done. Remember I showed you when it came through just before it hit the Venturi, they were just exactly like this. At the Venturi, everything just goes into chaos, total chaos. And the leading white electron neutrino, they call it, is the glower. And that's what causes them to bobble around. The black is only sucks the white ones back in. It's like the positive to the negative. That's all it is. And nobody's ever seen it. Because black is not there. So it's just never seen. Rod is the only one that's ever captured this that I know of. Rod Warren and I worked on this for years. And that's all they want to see is the same thing. They want to see that black ball. And they want to see the electron shower. I just showed you this. So I don't know how anybody can dismiss this and say, oh, well, don't talk to the guy, he's crazy. Here it is, there's the black ball, there's the white showers. So, I, you know, I, I sound frustrated because I am. I did this six years ago. I had this exact same, I said, this is dark matter. It's dark matter. That's sucking this back in. It's pulling back the white. We never knew it was there. It is there, and it is there in copious quantities, and the nucleus of the atoms are made of those dipole electrons and the black particles fill in the voids. They don't mind being up against anybody. They want to be up against the white ones just as hard as they can get. But And they don't mind being up against each other. Yeah, yeah, you come on, no problem, hang around me, no problem. We'll just sit on top of each other and we'll have a good time. White one will never do that. Just stay away from me. Get the hell out of my way. All right, I have things to talk about. Love to talk. As far as I know, just about anybody would call these rocks. <laughs> well, I could tell you what else they would call it. A geologist would say, that's feldspar. Well, that's not feldspar. That's pleura. That is lung fabric. Well, this one is a lung that the fabric has eroded away. And you can literally see the alveoli. You see these? You see these? You see any difference? No, you do not. They are identical, and guess what? This is where all the red blood ran out, and guess what? This is the blood that ran out on my counter. You understand? This is, don't ever have anybody tell you you can't get blood out of a rock. You can't get a rock without blood. <laughs> it's insanity. We're living in the same world now. Okay, I want you to look at this carefully. This is the bone in the back of a fingertip, which is literally gigantic. That is the fingernail. That is the blood supplies. That, again, is the fingernail quite well preserved. I have the fingerprints that came off of here. It starts to grip skin very quickly. I will show you this, and it is DNA certified. I was the one that took the DNA out from up in the arterial network, which is in the finger. This thing must weigh 500 pounds. I, I ripped my tendon trying to move that thing. Well, I did move it, but my tendon moved too. <laughs> All right, this was where they, I took the fingerprints off 
of that gigantic finger that I just showed you. This is what's grip skin, and this is a whole different type of skin that's on the rest of your body. And it came off just in a thick piece about this thick, and, and that is exactly like his blankets here, exact same stuff. It's keratinized, heavy duty, really tough, tough stuff. And I, I wanna look at the ke chemistry here because I believe this has a lot of iridium in it. We are loaded with every chemistry product that is in this chart here, every single one, 100%. Not, you know, in very, very small quantities, a lot of it, but we, are, we use all of this to facilitate the movement of molecules in our body and to create structures that are a very, very tough and tenuous, like the grip skin on your, your hands and your feet. Extremely tough. So, I fully understand this stuff now, and I, I, there's no way I can hide from it. There's no way you can hide from it. Now, you saw that it's just like three feet long that's that fingertip three feet long the tip of a finger now this is the dna test we're done five years ago almost six years and this was the 36 inch tip that's what i called it so if you follow this down this and i took the extraction from it obviously nobody came here and took it out and then took to sent it back to michigan no i took it box i did it very well i'm not an idiot i know how to do it it's now this was pcr this is a very very good test. This, this enhances the, the DNA products. It sort of like lets them grow a little bit. I, I don't know exactly. i got to be honest with you. This is a little beyond me. However, what I do know is this was dense DNA and all three of them tested. I had three samples done. They were all came back to correct for um, actually human DNA, and they were the, the DNA, human DNA. The products were submitted to this Eaton Bios lab and for DNA sequencing, um, prime repairs, generate the PCR products using DNA sequence. Excellent quality DNA sequence obtained for the 36 inch tip and for the lung. Here's the lung, hold on. And the lung is our size. See, that's the difference. They were, they're right on my own property here. Nobody, I didn't go anywhere to go. I just went and picked them up. And this is a lung, and that's covered with pleura. I've checked this all out, and I took the DNA sample from up in here somewhere. I read out of the red blood, and any doctor or anybody that has a book that shows what lungs look like can tell that's a lung. And I have other ones that blood just gushed out of them. So don't tell me you can't get blood out of a rock. You want to see blood? I'll show you some blood out of a rock. But this is it, homo sapien, mitochondrial, B gene, and D loop region. That's it. That's the one. And then it came down and shows all of da 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 And, you know, this was it's just a certified test verified by the lab director at Helix Biolabs. Now, again, they didn't take the sample. I gave them the stuff. If I sent them some of my own blood or I just messed up, well, then I messed up. But I didn't mess up. 